Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from our sponsor. The Daily Compliance News for September 26, 2022, the worst for Brett Favre edition. As we report from, uh, or rather reported by ESPN, NFL Hall of Famer Brett Favre uh, continues to uh, press Mississippi State officials for help uh, in paying for the sports facility at his former universities, even though this was um, legally questionable. He hasn't been charged in Mississippi's massive welfare scandal, but things are not looking too good for the Hall of Famer. Next up from the OCCRP, that's the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, a Honduran court sentenced the country's former first lady uh, to 14 years in prison and fined her some $558,000 for fraud and corruption against the state. She was a Uh, First Lady from 2010 to 2014, and uh, during that time stole uh, about the same amount from the uh, government. Uh, Next up from Reuters, Barclays continues its banks behaving badly reputation as it was sued on Friday uh, in a class action where shareholders claimed they were defrauded in connection with the bank's sale of $17.6 billion in debt more than regulators had allowed. Uh, The suit uh, in the U.S. is based on Barclays holding ADRs in the United States. The complaint said Barclays made material false and misleading statements in its annual report around its internal controls over financial reporting. So uh, if it can be something nefarious... Or otherwise, you have to say Barclays is right up there at the top. And the sleaze continues at number 10. As Dowling Street uh, defended the new PM Liz Trust chief of staff, after it emerged, he's not being paid by the government or indeed the Tory party, but as a lobbying company rather than a government employee. Uh, The current government said it's not unusual for um, someone to join the government on secondment, and that certainly is true, particularly in an advisory role, but a payment from the company that the seconded employee used to work for should not be made because obviously that's a major conflict of interest. And one thing you can say about the Tory party in England is Sleaze is their close personal intimate friend as they continue to push the boundaries of corruption. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network, and I hope you will join me this week as I have a five-part exploration of the new Monaco Doctrine and as encapsulated in the Monaco Memo. So check it out on the FCPA Compliance Report each day at 10 a.m. this week. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.